Hi everybody. Hello, hello, hello. I've got it all set up. We're all good. I can see it on the computer. Happy days. Right, let's see if I can get it on here as well. And then that way, if one goes down, I've got both of them. Yeah, I've got it. We're good. Hi, Yvonne. Hi, you lovely. Okay. There we are. I have tried to stop the pulsing as normal. It doesn't seem to want to do it, but there you go. Looks <laughs> like there's only me and you, Yvonne. Oh, no, there's nine, but... People are a bit shy. Hi, Christine. I hope you've all had a good day. Weather hasn't been too bad, but windy today. Um, but at least it's dry. Hi, Vanessa. Hiya. So you're all going to get yourselves ready and organised for Christmas? It makes me laugh that I'm making one of these because uh, we don't do much for Christmas. But... Um, it doesn't have to be a Christmas one. You can use any of Julie's stamps, any any of them. And I have got, um, hi Tracy, I have got two of these planned for tonight. Uh, just to show you that one doesn't have to be a, a you know, it doesn't have to be a Christmas planner at all. Um, there's two ways of making this. Oh, Oh, have you had? Oh, yeah. My my partner has that done quite a lot. Um, takes ages to readjust your eyes, doesn't it? Hi, Penny. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well. I make these quite a lot. Um, maybe not just the Christmas ones, like I said, but they're really good for um, cr you know, craft fair makes and things like that because really they don't cost a lot to produce, but you know they look quite fancy. So uh, yeah. Well, we've got 12 on, so I'll start. So, Christmas planner, okay. It's a perpetual planner in that you are able to remove anything that you write in and replace it. So, every year you can just put the planner away and bring it out. If you don't put a date on it, you can bring it out the following year. As I said, I've got another one to show you later that isn't... Uh, all about Christmas now on this one I'm, I've put a pocket in as well which holds a pen I'll show you how to do that I'm going to show you how to do the whole thing from start to finish um, there's two ways like I said of making these planners so I'll just pop that to one side a minute um, one way is the first way I'm going to show you how to do it and the reason why I'm showing you both ways is because the first way is kind of a quick way of doing it and it requires this tape. Okay, I'll bring this down. I think it seems to be a bit high up. There you go. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Andrine. Okay, have fun at your class, Elizabeth. Yeah, so this tape is required. Now, this tape is not... Hi, right. Judith. This tape's not cheap. This tape is eight pounds a roll. Now, I've had this tape an awfully long time it, um, and it does last for a long time. But there is a way of making these books where you don't have to pay eight quid for a roll of tape. But I'm going to show you with the tape first and then I'll show you the other way and you can decide which way is best for you. If you know, so obviously, if you're going to sell them, then you can include the, pre, uh, the price of what you use in tape wise. So this is called construction tape. OK. Or. Archi I think it's called Architape, Architape, something like that. Architape is what it, we can get it called from Cool Cat Crafts. And this one is just called Construction Tape. And this one's from um, My Creative Spirit. And that's Claire Charville's place. Um, it's, it's, if you're making a lot of construction, you know, if you're doing a lot of 3D boxes and things like that, this is spot on for that. Um... But, like I said, you don't have to go to the expense. I'm making it out of grey board. Okay, so it, it, you know, it's quite, um, it's quite sturdy. I'm using a thousand micron grey board. Got it from Amazon. I buy it in, you can get it in A4 sheets and I've used an A4 sheet. You can also get it in A3 if you, like I said, if you wanted to make your big construction pieces, you can use that. For that and, and this tape. So, here's what we need. And this is what I've cut out already. Okay. We have 
two pieces that are five inches by eight and a quarter inch so basically the length that way of an A4 and then you can cut those two pieces out and you need a spine okay and the spine is two inches by eight and a quarter inches now your spine can be as thick as you want you could do a double sized spine and put more of these inserts in therefore giving you um more note space you know more planner space it's up to you so the spine is up to you but i've used a two inch by eight and a quarter inch okay so they're the three pieces that you're going to need now for the actual planner um use this is the stamps i'm going to use and the and all that kind of stuff so you can um see what i've used i'm going to use hazel's um what's it called square alphabet for the word planner okay so that's what i've used there i'm using julie's dinky rectangle die set and for that is going to be these little panels on here so you can write in what sections in there you know whether it's your menu planner or your gifts you're buying or whatever so I'm using them. I'm using the Christmas stencil of Hazel's and it's just literally called Christmas stencil and that's obviously going to be decorating it. Now these are Hazel's stamps. I won't be using this set, okay, not on this one, but you could, you could change it up, change the design on the front. I'll be using these two uh, essentially Christmas stamp sets. Now I might have them in the wrong packet so I'm not going to say which one's which. Um, I do have a tendency to put things back in the wrong packet so I'll be using them so I'll leave them up there so you can see those but when it comes to it that's what we'll be using okay so first thing I want you to do before you do anything is whatever micron grey board you're using I always like to make myself a spacer um, and you'll see why in a minute and literally all it is is just two sheet two two strips two odd strips um, and I'm just going to lay one on top of the other. I want a double thickness. And that is going to help you space the spine. And then put it in there. And you're going to space that there too. So this is the quick method, like I said. But the first thing we have to prep is the spine. So what are, we're going to have holes in this so we can bind it. So what we need to do is I have measured down about half an inch. And I've drawn a line straight across and I've done that on both ends okay then I've joined up them two lines in the middle I've drawn down with a pen okay and then I've measured it and I've found the center and I've marked it and then along the top I've laid my ruler along the top of that line that we drew that line across there and I've marked half an inch one inch and one and a half inches okay and what this is for is so that you can get either a hole punch or a crop crop a dial which is what i'm going to use and you're going to punch them holes in there before you do anything okay so obviously i've punched some holes out and not knocked them out so you just line it up i hope you can see that i'm just trying to look over the top of it and you're going to punch them holes one every time I use this this stuff gets stuck in the top you have to dig it out with a pokey tool two three and you do this on both the top and the bottom and I'm using the smaller hole with a cropper dial you get two size holes I'm using the smaller one okay okay what else this cross in the middle, we also want to poke this hole out as well. Just about reach there with the crop. And then we're going to do the bottom holes as well. Now, this is for binding your book, your, your notebook. So, they don't have to be spot on. You know, don't worry about it if they're not. It's your book. But by marking it, you should get it relatively straight and lined up. Oh, the speed of the woman right there we are okay so there's the holes punched in already let's move this out the way okay and now it's on to putting it together it's relatively easy now 
this method is really good as well for making memory books. I do make a lot of memory books. Um, and this is just like a continuum, continuation of one of those. So this tape, lay it down, okay? You can, if you wish, turn the end over just to hold it in place. And then pull a good length out. Um, with good scissors that don't stick, because this is quite a sticky tape, okay? I want you to snip it off and try and keep it flat, she says. And then this one, this left hand one, you're just going to place it on halfway across the tape, okay? There we go. And then you bring in your spacer, that's what this space is for. You pop your spacer in and this will help you and help the book to fold over. Okay. Then you bring your spine in and you lay it flush against that spacer. Push it tight against it. Try and eyeball it so the top and the bottom is quite straight. There we are. And then you can see you've left yourself a space down there which will help the book to close. Then you simply bring this over the top. Press it down, bring this one down. Don't worry if it doesn't meet, okay? Press it down because what you can do then is just put a piece between the two and bridge it up. You don't see um, the joins on this tape, which is quite nice once you've pressed it down. And then what I do is you can do it with a bone folder or your finger, just run your finger down that line and you'll see that you are able to open and close the book. I do like a, an album that lays flat, you know, when you open it up. So, again, next side on, pull some out. Okay, get your spine this time, lay it half on. Don't worry if you cover the hole up because you can always use a pokey tool and um, push it back on again. Okay, line your spacer up, get your other part, line it top and bottom, pop it down, press it in place, remove your spacer and pull this down, across there and up. So this one was slightly longer and it did meet, happy days. There we are, and then push your finger down the join. There we go. So, before I do anything else, because I have covered up some of these holes, I'm just going to re put my poker tool in and put the hole back in again. Okay, because I don't want to lose them, we need them. So, if you find you can't see it, if you press down on your finger, you get a little indentation of where the hole is and you're able to re put it back in again. Okay? So, we've got the holes. We've got the book, as you can see. Don't need the spacer for now. But now what we need to do is edge all the way around it with this black tape. Okay. Now there's a few ways. If you don't want to use the black tape, some people use a pro marker. Some people use gesso. But if you've got the tape in the first place, you may as well just use it. So straight across. Okay. It doesn't need to be, it needs to cover edge to edge, but it doesn't have to have too much hanging over like we did when we were attaching the spine and all. And then if you turn it sideways, you can get your halfway point. Lay it down flat on there. Okay. And then what I tend to do before I uh, do anything is just put a slit on that side and put a slit on this side. It helps you to wrap it round in a minute. Okay, so if you then start in the middle, pull the tape tight over to the end there, and then you're able to wrap it and wrap it over the top. And you get a nice neat edge there. And you do the same on this side. Push it across and pull it down so it's tight. And we're going to do that now on the end.
of there. If you've lost the holes again, put them back in. It's fine. This tape's quite forgiving. You need to be able to see them from both sides for, for binding this thing, okay? So here we go, it's bottom end. Put some tape off. Pick up your book. This is where you need five hands to stop being stuck to your tape. Stop it. Anyway, I'll put it that way up, I can do it that way. Put it on halfway. And do exactly the same as you've just done before. Slit the end. So, is there any quick hi Cynthia? Is there any questions so far while I'm just sorting this bit out? If I miss any questions, okay, I will sort them out at the end. Once I've finished, I'll go back through all and have a look and see. Um, there's a few people not on tonight because they've obviously got other things, important things to do. And they can do it on catch-up, so any questions there I'll be able to answer. Two, I'm sure there will be some. I've put the holes back in and now I just need to do the ends. Okay. It does look like an awful lot of work, but once you get to know what you're doing, honestly, you can push these out quite quickly. There we are. And it goes. Slit the end, slit the side. There's loads of different ways of doing these. Um, Paul Ford's a good guy to have a look at if you really want to get into album making. He, he does loads of albums. He is the album king. So all we're looking for is nice, neat corners. I like this tape sticks to itself amazingly well. Really, really well. So there we go. So that's the whole four sides covered now. Okay. No, three sides even. I was ahead of myself there. Okay. You do actually get a little minute with this if you don't um, if you don't get it down straight. You can pull it off until you've proper burnished it down. You can actually sort of reposition it a little bit. There's too much tape there. Take them off. So no questions so far. Oh, we're doing well. We're doing well. Okay. There we go. There we go. Down with the tape. Has anybody ever made these already? I'm sure you have. Notebooks are right nice to do. And there's that many nice papers and rice papers, isn't there? That you'd be able to cover them even with them, you know, for quickness. There we go. Nice tight corners. There we are. Don't worry about how messy this kind of thing looks because we're going to cover them now. So I like to cover mine with pieces of black card just to make it tidy so the measurements on the black card are let's see we have got four and three quarters by eight okay four and three quarter inches by eight so i'm going to pop these on now just to tidy everything up i'm using wet glue you can use tape, whatever you want to use. And I'm just going to, and it, the glue sticks really well to this construction tape too. So I'm just going to cover them so that it's all nice and neat. And you've got two for inside, you've got two for outside, and you've got two spines as well because you've got, obviously you've got to cover up the grey board spines. You don't want to leave them exposed. Okay. And we go with that one. Take off any excess. Right. So I'm going to put one of the spines on. And then obviously it means we've covered up the holes. So we have to re put them back in again. There we 
go. So while it's there, pop it from this side. Actually, I'm just going to grab a little piece of sponge to push into so that I don't stab myself. And a little bit of sponge. There we go. So, straight through. There we are. And now you can see the three holes on the back, but do them as well on there. Both sides. Don't forget the one in the middle as well. That one's quite important because that one's going to be the one that holds the elastic that keeps your book's feather closed. So now we can go on the opposite side and put these black ones on. Some people don't put these on, they just go straight on with the pattern paper. But I do like to cover everything so it looks neat before I start. So. That's it, and then we should have one more spine, and then that's your whole book covered, ready for the patterns, papers, etc. Now, I have got a lot of it prepped because I wanted to show you two methods of doing it, and that would have took all night. So, especially if I was decorating both of them from scratch. There we are. Okay, so again, I've covered the holes. So we've got to go in with this again. I mean, I suppose you could you could leave the end holes till the very end and do them with the crop from there, but you wouldn't be able to do that one unless you've got a long gone crop, and I don't have one of those, so I have to kind of put it in to start with. And you can see I keep going from both sides because when we thread the elastic through, if you haven't gone from both sides, sometimes a bit of the card sticks in the way and it takes forever to get it through. So... There we are, so that's it, repoked. And while that's drying, we'll get on with the rest of it. You can see it, it, you know, it folds, it opens nicely, it folds nicely. So I'll just stick that on one side and we'll start with the actual panels that are going inside the book. So I'll decorate them first and then I'll tell you about the, how to do the pockets. I think that is the way to go. So what we have are four panels and they measure um, must be written on this one four and a half by six and three quarters and they are going to go on each of the little folders that hold the note paper inside so as you can see I've already decorated them right and these two these three sorry are already decorated but I am going to decorate this one so you can see how I did it so this one measures four and three quarters by seven and three quarters okay and these are going on all the panels on the front and on the back of the book now I'm not decorating the spine I'm leaving the spine black up to you whether you want to do that but I'm not going to do that um, I'm just leaving it black so I'm just going to shove them on one side while I decorate this one up and show you how I did it using the stamp stamp from Hazel. Okay, pretty quick actually. It's, it's quite a quick design to do. So, the first thing I'm going to do is get the stencil out. And I'm using Distress Inks as usual. I like my Distress Inks. And I've chosen this time a Speckled Egg and Villainous Potion. I uh, do like a purple and blue combo. So we're going to go in with the blue to do the stenciling and literally we're just going to keep it light. I don't want it too heavy. I'm going to start up at the top. I'm just going to put some on to around about there. A little bit on this side as well and then I'm going to move it down as you can see, it's quite light. 
I'm going to move it down and I'm going to put some in here and at the bottom as well. You can have a look at it and see if you want to put a bit more through the middle. I'll just put a bit there. I've kept some white space. I quite like a bit of white space, as you know. So that's that. And then on with the stamping. Okay, so let's have these. So I want this one with the trees in the corner down here. And I would like... I think I'll start with them. I'll pick it up. Now I am going to stamp with the Distress Ink. So it all it all matches. So I'm starting with the clump of trees then. Um, lift it up so you can see what I'm doing. Now with Distress Ink, sometimes if it's a bit dry, you'd have to go in a couple of times. I mean, I use this purple one quite a lot. So I'm just going to pop that one back on. And the, you get some separate trees as well for with hazel stamps. And I think I'm going to use this one just there. Just want a clump of trees really and a small one just there so i'll do those first before i do the top bit so I, I can have a look at the comments now has anybody got any questions about what i've done so far or no we're good we're good okay you can always Send me a message if you get stuck, if you want to make it. So there's your tree clump at the bottom. Now, there's so many stamps on hazel set that you could do these in quite a few different designs, I imagine. So this is the one that's hanging from the top now. I'm going to pop that one on. And again, I'm going to go in with Distress Ink. I'm going to use the, uh, the purple again. So it's all the same right the way through and then as usual i've got a piece of acetate pop it down just so i can don't have to keep cleaning the stamp but i can keep moving it along i'm going to stamp it three times remove the acetate it's it's a good little layer uh, repositioning tip that quite i use it quite a bit keeps your work clean it's number two Pop it back down again, move it along and um, just try and line it so it's, it's quite straight but there we are. Pick it up, stamp it again and then that's your stamping done with those so that can go away. And then all you've got to do is put some pretty snowflakes around the outside. I mean, this isn't too complicated, this design. I've kept it quite simple because I knew it was going to be a fairly, you know, lengthy live with doing the second one as well. So, there we are. So, I picked out the snowflakes from the this set. I'm using the large one and may use all of the uh, the small ones as well. And I'm just going to use the exact same combination of colours. I don't want to change the colours. I'm going to keep them. I probably should have re-inked this one, but it's a background. It'll be fine. Okay. So I'm just going to do some stamping into the background. A couple of these bigger, bigger ones. Um, one there, we'll say. And then one down there. The good thing about this is it doesn't matter if they don't all come out, see, you know, even because it's a background, nobody really can tell. So I think I'm going to put one more, seeing as we should have five of things on there, or half of one. Okay, put that one back before I'll use it because I do have a hab to move in the little stamps. There we go. And then I've got the others popped on the end of there so they were ready. So I'm going in with the next biggest one and then I'm going to vary it and put a bit of purple in this. So I'm going to use purple for this one. So the first one is quite dark. So I'm just basically, wherever I've just stamped one of the large ones, I'm putting, uh, I'm putting a purple one next to it. And then you can also use second and third generation 
if you wish, either side. Put one on that side. And then we'll just have one on there, I think. Okay, pop that one away. Then go back to the blue one again, next size down, which I've got on the end of this thing. So I'll go back to blue, next size down, pop it next to it. This is so cute. The little tiny, tiny one is, is absolutely lovely, perfectly formed. So basically I've just worked outwards from the large one. You don't need to be over precise with it because like I said, it's a background. Just fill them in wherever you feel you need one. And then using the really tiny one, I'm going to go back to the purple again. I don't really need the blue now. Back in with the purple. And I'm going to go either side of that blue one that I've just put in. I hope you can see this. Yeah, I think you can see it quite well. Can you all see it okay? Yeah? Yeah. And just put a few here and there. Fill in your spaces. Yeah, I think one more there. That's it. That's the way. So that's the outside bit done. Now, the colours in this shed never look the right colours because the light is so bright. Uh, it kind of bleeds them out a little bit. So I will take photos of what I've done tonight and I'll pop them on tomorrow and then you can see them. So let's move them out of the way. And this, and now all we want to do is just fill in with a bit of colour those triangles and those triangles. So I'll use the top of this. I've got a water brush, knocking about a bit of water. Mm, she says, yeah, here it is. Okay, a <laughs> massive pot of water. So I'm just going to pick up some of this. I don't want it too dark, to be fair. I'll add a bit of water to it and pick it up that way. And then I'm just going to fill in the colour on these. Now, because you've stamped it with Distress Ink, some of the edge colour will bleed into it as well anyway. Um, so try not to do it too wet or you'll you'll lose the edge. But then if you like that kind of look, that's absolutely fine. So coloured in the bottom ones. They don't have to be massively shaded or anything like that. If you find you've put a bit too much on, take it off if you took too much water in in the middle. So just fill in them as best you can without getting it too wet. Just to give it a little bit of interest there. Now I have, as you saw before, done the rest of them so it's not too bad. And while this one's drying I'll sort the pockets out. Okay? So that's them. Let's wipe that off there, put it, get it all over me. Move all this and then we can crack on with the insides and the stringing up and all the rest. Okay. I think I'll just sling them on the floor. Right, so we've got four large ones there and four of those. They're all ready. So the inside parts, there's four of. Okay, so they measure. Hi, Jackie. Just found it was on. Oh, it's okay, doll. You can go back and have a look at the beginning. So, this is nine and a half by seven, the whole size. Okay, but me being me, for an easy way, I get an A4, I fold it in half, and I cut it to four and a half by seven. When it's already folded because that is an easier way of doing it so it's four and a half by seven okay so that's the black part and then for your note papers now this isn't white this is only copy of paper this isn't white copy of paper because uh, my partner bought um the wrong one he bought a recycled one and it's kind of yellow so i thought well what better time to use it than this so uh you need four of those, and they are slightly smaller when folded than that actual cover. Alright, so when they're folded, they measure 
four and a half by six and three quarters. So they, ju they just fit snug inside there. You don't have to attach them in. You just have to have them ready on the inside for when we've done the stringing. So what I'm going to do with this now is those four that we created are going to go on the front of them just to decorate them nicely so that they they look tidy inside your book. So it's just a case of gluing this in on ready. Okay. On top of each one. These are already dry, so I've got no fear of uh, smearing them. Unless I've got really wet hands, as you can see. <laughs> that one didn't work quite well. Me, um, my brush was a bit wet when I started using it, and it just did not work well, so I turned it over and used the other side, as you do. So, and all I've done with this, which I haven't done with this one yet, because it's still wet, but I'll show you, is I've doodled around the edge. So the one I've just done, once it's dry, I'll doodle around the edge of that one, and then you can see how I did the doodling. It's not difficult. Okay. So while we're on this one, doing these, um, I've cut some rectangles using those dies I showed you at the beginning of Julie's. Okay. And... <clears throat> They, you don't have to put them on, it's totally up to you. I just thought they were quite cute. So I've cut the rectangles out and I've cut them so it's a frame, okay? So, and I've got, I've got foam pads on all four sides, but you could leave the foam pad off the top so you could slide in what you want to call that particular section, okay? So I'm going to pop one of them on each of the front of these, okay? I have even took the sticky off the back to stop it taking so long to get that off. Because half the time that's, a, <laughs> that's the longest part of the live, watching somebody trying to take the sticky off the back of one of these. So we've got one, two, three, and four. And when you cut this as a frame using the two dies, what comes out of it is this. And we're going to pop that back in. Um, so you can write on what your sections are. So I need to do a doodle on this. And literally, I'll push it up so you can see. I don't know, you've probably seen me do this a million times. Uh, it doesn't have to be a straight line. It just has to go all the way around the edge. I mean, if you want to keep it wobbly, go for it. Wobble it on purpose, you know. I usually draw two lines because I think to make it look like you intended for it to be wobbly okay and then i usually do a couple of zigzags in the corner just to, for added pizzazz as such and then all i'm going to do is glue these in flat and then they're ready to be written on when you are oh, what i buy there something stuck to it there we are take it off and then that matches the edges then, if you know what I mean. So just slide it back in. You are covering up some of your design, but you know the designs underneath this, so it's fine. And then these can sit on one side while we string the thing along. Okay. There we are. So there's your four insert pack panels done. And there we are. Put them off to one side. And now we can string our book. So it's not difficult. So you need some elastic. Um, and this is one mil elastic. I got it on one of them. It's um it's fairly reasonable priced. I think I think I only paid two ninety nine for it, and there was loads on it. So I've I've took off about thirty inches. I know that sounds an awful lot, but use your ruler, and uh, ju I just I think I just wrapped it around three times. It's yeah, three times, and then decide which side you like the most, which looks the tidiest. And to me, that's the tidiest. So that can be the outside, okay. And you start off. 
at the back of it and you thread it through the first hole there on the left okay and you pull your elastic all the way through until you've gotten about I don't know five inches or so let's see let's measure it just to be sure yeah you only need to give yourself about five inches hanging over there okay so let's move them so you can see where I'm going so you've gone in from the back in into the middle and you're going to take this elastic down to this first hole on the left down here okay and you're going to thread it through there okay so you've got one line all right then you're going to take this elastic up into the next hole and back through again so sometimes you need a poker tool sometimes you don't as you can see so we've got one two three now we're going to go straight up to the middle hole at the top okay yeah at this point you don't need to pull it tight then we're going to go along to this last hole okay we're completely bypassing the hole that's right in the middle because that hole in the middle is nothing to do with the binding it's to do with the closure for the book here we go with the poker tool i've got no fingernails you see ladies as you might have seen so i need to poke it through with the poker tool so i can get hold of it there we are got it so there's the five inch bit and there you are we've pulled it down to there and you've only got one hole left so it's pretty obvious where it's got to go from there it's got to go through there if you find that your elastic's frayed and it's a nightmare to get through just snip a tiny bit so it's tight on the edge and you can put it back through again okay so as you can see it's not that difficult to string so we've got one there and we've got one here but we need them to come into the middle so we can tie them so if you turn your book over okay you'll see you've got one that sits there with a hole in the middle and one that sits there with a hole in the middle so you need to just thread them back through that middle hole this is slightly more awkward because you've already got elastic in there but if you pull it to one side you can usually find enough space to poke it through she says right, that's why I only use one mil elastic it's only to hold the pieces, the pages in. So there we are. It's through, and then if you pull this one through as well into the middle, poke it in. Now I'm gonna have to trim that one because it's got a little frizzy on the edge. There we go. And I really am making a dog's dinner out of this doesn't need to take that long so now you've got them all back through okay so at this point now you can start to pull them you want them to hold your papers in but you don't want them too tight that they actually rip the edges of your book here so one by one sort of twang them pull them through until they've got them all tightened up that's too loose I'm going to pull them a little tighter yeah that'll do okay and then all you simply do is tie this one in the middle and this one makes your fourth um your fourth string for holding your fourth book all right you can do the old thingy trick where you wrap it around twice so it doesn't spread there we are and then literally tie a couple of knots in it and cut off the excess there we go so you've got one two three four strings okay now you are able to put these through it so find the middle literally slide it in and this is why you can change it every year because you can just keep putting new ones of these in it's right handy and there are two And your third string, 
three and four. So now all we've got to do is decorate the inside and the outside. So it's pocket time. You don't have to put a pocket on if you don't want to. It's absolutely fine. But here's what we're going to do. Okay, stick the back one down. We've got one of these to put on the back. We'll put that one in to start with. And then we know that one's in. And I'm going to put a pocket on the left hand side, which is the next one I'm going to put in. Okay. So flip that down. So this one here is where we want the pocket. And it's really, really easy to create a pocket. So I create the pocket before I glue it in. And what we need to do is we have a piece of black card that is seven and a quarter by five and a quarter. Okay. And then bring in your scoreboard using the inch side of it. And if you put the short end, the five and a quarter at the top, okay, you just score down at one and a half. Okay, that's it. That's all you need to do. One score. Now, people do score either side of it, but I found an easier way of doing that. We don't have to mess about too much. So this one that we've just put in, okay, burnish it, all right, and that's going to become a bottom. So what I tend to do now is lay it, so you've got a bit either side to glue it to, yeah? Pull that up and then one by one, so you know it's going to fit, just wrap it round yourself. You don't need to measure it. That's pound to a penny, you'll measure it and it won't fit. So that's how you get your three score lines, yeah? Are you all with me? Can you give us a thumbs up if, you know, if I've explained that okay? Because I don't feel like I did. Okay, bottom, that's the one we actually scored. Okay, put your pockets, put your pieces on and just fold the sides in. So now you've got three score lines, one either side and one at the bottom. So what I want you to do is take out the little squares on either side, like that. Okay, so you end up with that shape and then just simply Put a little mitre, not too much of a mitre, just a little one, on either one of the edges at the bottom, okay? And at the top, you can mitre that one as well. It just helps to um, make it neat when you're putting it together, I feel. I always, I always mitre things. I have a thing for mitering. Okay, don't worry that I've written on the top there. You won't see that. So now what we want to do is put this back in, make sure we've got it the right way up first so that these are at the top, okay? And then all we're going to do is glue that bottom one up, okay? There. And then glue them sides in, all right? Now that is much easier for me. If there's an easier way of measuring something, I like to find it. So all you're doing is sticking it to the back, okay? So make sure it's down. It actually looks more harder work than it is. And like I said, the first one that you make of on it, it'll be a bit, you know, oh, I don't know if I'm going to do this. But yeah, you'll do it. And once you've done one, happy days. So now you've created a pocket there, okay? So I'm going to glue that in. Or you can use red tape, totally up to you. I'm going to use glue for speed. Okay, you're going to glue the whole thing in. There we are. That's going to go on there. And then you are going to create a piece. Make sure you keep away from this, this bit that's folding up when you're putting this in, okay? Because you don't want it to hinder it folding. Okay, down it goes. And then what I've done is... I've made the bottom part that you can't see to stick over there again. Yeah? Okay. 
and you didn't need to see me do that because you've seen me do it before so that one is now going on the front of there so that's totally covered the writing that I put on before there we go so you've got your pockets on the inside you've got your bits that you can take in and out every year so now all we've got to do is decorate the front and the spine looks nice and neat apart from the uh, that bit there which we're going to do in a bit with the closure I think I'll put the front and backs on these now this on then we're all good for the closure part you don't have to put a closure in in that case you don't put the hole in the middle but I'll show you how to do that. There's no great shakes with it. It's not difficult. So that's going on. You can decorate all this up as well before you put it together. I just wanted to show you how to do the inside first. I was in a hurry. <laughs> and then this one can go on the back. So you've got a nice neat planner all the way through. So do you think anybody that's out there watching, do you think you'll have a go at making them? Do you think? They're nice little presents. They're nice little gifts for people. You know. Who doesn't like to write a list? Everybody likes lists, don't they? Right, so that's the front and back done. Yeah, so I'm just going to slide whichever one I need out so I can get to them. In fact, I'll take them all out so I can get to that hole in the middle. I'll take the middle two out. There we are. And now that little hole that we put in the middle is there. Okay, so all we need to do is get the old elastic. I don't know if that's long enough. No, it's not. Get your elastic back out, okay, and wrap the elastic around your planner, not too tight, okay, and you've got to tie a knot in it, so tight enough for it to close, that's all you need to do, leave yourself a little bit more for not tying, and then what you literally do is them two ends from the outside, you thread inside, so you're making a loop really. So, one in, because you can't get two in at once. And once you've got the one in, you can usually get the other one through. One's in, pull it to one side if you can. Try and feed the other one in. If you might need a poker tool to do so. No, I didn't. Happy days. So, once you've got it through, the two ends, you just literally tie in a knot. Okay, Maybe a double knot, so it doesn't come through the hole. This is the fiddliest bit for me. There we go. <laughs> the joys. There we are. One. Oh, I'm just going to do one for now. Okay. Get your loop. And that loop then is going to fasten your planner. Like that. So there is something I haven't done, and that is, I just remembered, I haven't doodled around this edge, which make it look a bit weird because everything else has been doodled on. So I'm just going to doodle on that. With intent, like I said, doesn't need to be. I'm using a blue one for this because I've actually used, um, you know, blue and purple. Could have been purple, either or. Not black though, that would have been a bit too harsh. There we go, so the doodles is on. And then what I like to do is close the planner up, okay, put the, the words Christmas planner on. Now the planner, like I showed you before, um, the, the alphabet, the squared alphabet is what I, wear, I, I made the word planner up with. I'm sure you've all got an alphabet. Um, this one's Hazel's, like I said. I'll just put these back in. And then we're good to finish it up then with the wording on the front. And then I'll show you how to do the other method. I've got most of it prepped, girls. You won't have to sit through the whole thing again for another hour. Um, most of it's done. I just want to show you the ba the bones of, you know, how you, um, how you put it together without that tape. So all I'm going to do is use the brushes, the purple brush. That's the word planner, using the square. And this was the Christmas word off of the... Um, this one here off of the snow globe okay so all I'm going to do is just put a bit of purple on it from the bottom and Elaine just text me <laughs> removed everything right there we go I'm just going to put a little bit of purple on it 
It maybe needs a little bit more purple than that. It looks a bit pale. That's better. Just from the bottom. And the other one, the, the first one I did, the brown and blue one, I did actually, as you, I don't know whether you'll be able to see it, but I did heat emboss that. that. That's like all shiny, if you can see it. Yeah, well, I'm not going to do that tonight and keep you. But you know how to do that, I'm sure. Okay. Honestly, Vanessa, it's so much easier than it looks. Well, I've just showed you. When 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 you when you give them to people, they're all dead impressed. Like, oh, did you make that? And you, literally, you know. But they are a nice gift, I think. Right, close your planner. Get it where you want the closure. Put the word Christmas above it. Okay. Make sure any of this sticky. I put it on foam pads. All right. Just to raise it up a little bit. But you don't want too much on the front of a planner because it's in and out your bag and it's on and off a shelf and blah, blah, blah. And anything much that you put on it, to be honest, you end up knocking it off, putting it in and out your bag. So there's that one. Okay. So there's the blue and brown one. And there's that one. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to show you the other way now. And this one isn't a Christmas one. I've chosen a different uh, Julie Hickey stamp for this. Really pretty nonetheless. Quite um, quite snazzy actually. So I'm going to bring in everything that I've got ready. Okay. Here we go. So let's move it all out of the way. And then we can crack on. Um, one short. Here we go. And it's the same measurements as before. All right. Exactly the same measurements as before, but this time, let's get all the bits off it, got little bits of grey board on it. Um, this time, I didn't have any uh, A3 card, so I decided to use two pieces of A4 and I've joined them. There's the join there. I'll put the join there where the ruler is. That's where it's joined there. Okay. And what, how you measure that is, you get your pieces of grey board that's going to make your, your binder, your book. And you kind of lay it on your paper, alright? So you can see how big it's got to be where you've got to join it. But when you do join it, you have a look there, that's where it's joined. But if you have a look on the back, that's where the, where the middle is. I know you're not going to see that because the... Um, the paper's black, you know. So if you try to put your spine right on the middle on this side, it wouldn't be on the middle of the, the card join. On the other side, it would be off to the left. So what I do is this little white mark here, yeah? I feel on the out the back side and I find where the actual join of the paper is and I put a little white mark there or a blue mark or whatever colour mark you can see, you know, with it. so you can see that that literally is the middle of the paper. That's where the join is on the back. And I've treated the um, spine in exactly the same way. I've put the holes in, in the same way as I did before. But this time, I've, I've got double-sided tape on one side of this, thick double-sided tape. You can use red tape. You can use glue, it's totally up to you, I'm just using this for speed. And I've got a mark in the middle of where this spine is. So I'm going to try and line up the middle of the spine with the, where that white mark is there. Don't worry if you don't get it too spot on, it's fine. Okay, on it goes. There we are. Spine's in. Right, and it's stuck to the paper now. Alright, so. Then I'm going to use my spacer, just as I did before. You remember the little spacer we used? Every time I use grey board, I make myself a spacer because sometimes grey board's thicker than others. So if you use the exact spacer that for the exact grey board you use, and you'll always get it right, okay? So we take the backing off of this one. I've just put three on it for speed. And like I said, this is the one where you do not need that black tape. So you're not forking out an extra $7.99 for something. Everyone has black card or whatever colour card you want to do it in. And I do have a tendency to do them in black because they don't get as grubby in and out of your bag and being handled. So space it on, okay? I'll do it on this side first and then I'll turn it round. Space it on. I do tend to work from the right better. Push it up against that there. Line this up in the exact same way you did your other one, 
right there and after a while you can eyeball these you don't even need the spaces but good good practice to get into press it down and then you're going to put this one on this side obviously you've got to have two sides to it Well, I'm glad I'm glad I'm making it look easy for you so that you can have a go. I mean, if there's any if there's an easier way of doing something, I'll usually try to find it because anything complicated gets boring and you don't want to finish it. That's the way I feel about it. But if it's really nice and easy and quick, I'll turn it round and work from this side because I'm better on this side being right-handed. So push it up against there. Line it up top and bottom as best you can. Pop it down. Right. Okay. So, it's going to join up nicely. There we are. Well, obviously, we've got no tape on this now. But there's a way around it, girls, don't worry. So, I'm going to pop the holes in this like I did before because I've covered them up. I'll use this one because it's bigger. Pop your holes in. And the one in the middle. I won't string this up in front here, but I will... Finish it tonight after the live because it's strung up in exactly the same way as I did the last one. Um, and then I'll put the picture of this one on finished tomorrow as well. You see now, I'll make sure when I take the picture, if I hold this up, I'm not sure if you can see it. I'll just hang on to look. Yeah, you can see now where the, paper, where the black card is joined goes right down the middle of those holes, which is exactly what you wanted. You want it to look nice on that side, like it's, you know, you didn't want the join halfway off one way or the other. So we got that sorted. Now, obviously, we need to put some tape down there and down there. Okay? But we're not going to use this black tape because we're going to pretend we don't have that. So what I'm going to use is um, double-sided. I'm just going to take this one off here. And now I'm going to put one on this side and remove that. Because we need to cover the middle of this eventually. Right. There we are. So let's just pop that in. I'm going to pop my holes back through again in a minute because they're, they're there on the other side. Okay. Right. We need some black pieces now. So we have inner covers just as we had before. For when we've wrapped this round, we've got some black pieces there. So, actually, I'll wrap it first and then I'll show you. So, all around the outside here, I've got red tape. Okay? You remember, like, years ago when you used to co cover your school books? It's a bit like that. So, what I want to do is mitre across. All right? Across there. And I'll show you close up if I can. I haven't gone right to the corner. There's about a millimetre there that I didn't touch the corner of. And I'm going to do that on all four sides. Once I've got the tape on, I'm going to cut the corners off, okay? Don't worry if they're too sharp, because we are going to cover all the insides if you mess up a little bit. Just leave about a mil, you know? A mil, that's about it. That's all you need. So we've done that, okay? Now we're going to take off the tape. Remove that one as well. Take off the backings off the tape on all four sides. She says. There we go. Yeah, this is very much years and years ago when when I was at school. You used to get your exercise books and you used to have to take them home and cover them in wallpaper. And this is exactly how we used to do it. Okay, so we need to bring this across this across and this across but I do I might put another row of tape along there just to give it something proper to stick to so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to go straight across there straight across the right across the edge and then we know it's definitely going to stick together There we go. There we go. Rip this tape off and then we can crack on. 
I mean, you can see that using the construction tape earlier is easier. It is quicker, but at the same token, if you get into the habit of doing it this way. So what I do now is I lift it up and I kind of push it on the desk so that this corner here knows where it needs to be. I start in the middle and I push it out to the edge, okay? Like that, okay? I'll do this side. I'll do the two long edges first. Pick it up, okay? Push it down on your desk so the grey board is resting. Sorry guys. Sorry, sorry. Hong Kong ringing. I'll be a minute. Yeah. Right, okay, so I'll start again. Pick it up, push it down against your desk. Okay, start in the middle and push it over. Okay, there we go. And then you can do the long side, the short sides then. Hi Sandy, same thing. Push it against your desk, push it down and push it across. There we are. Start in the middle, put it down, put it across. We are going to cover this with black card, so don't worry. All right. So we want to cover this middle bit. So I have a spine here, there. Um, I'll measure it for you. Did I write on both sides of the spine, which would have been silly? No, I didn't. There we go. I'll measure the bit that covers the spine. Obviously, we can't just put a piece down there because we've got to cover this, these two sides up as well. So it needs to be wider to go across like that. So if I measure it, Slightly different measurements in the last one. So this one is uh, two notches before four inches um, by the whole length of the A4. So it's eight and a quarter. Okay, and it's going to sit on there. Right, it's going to sit right on there. So I'm going to put some glue on this one. Okay, there we are. Right up to the edge on this if you can. There we go. I work better side on. And I'm going to just drop it down, eyeball it, top and bottom so it's straight. And it's on the spine, okay? Burnish it down. Get it off your fingers. And then I'm going to run my finger down the edge. Now before now, I've run a bone folder down here. And I've been a bit overzealous with it. <laughs> and I've gone right through the card. So I prefer to use my fingernail. And then when you've got where you want, you can put your ruler in and you can lift it up and stretch it where you want it to be. Okay. Making sure that that's down. Again, rub your finger down the join. Find your ruler part and push it up. There we go. This one is slight, it's not as bendy as the last one. It tends to come together a little bit more tight than the last one. But that's okay. It's one way of less of not spending your, you know, your cash. So I've got inners cut. And what I've done with these is I've stamped all over with Julie's... Um, let me find the name of it. I can never remember the name of this because there's two with very similar names. I think it's Floral Fancies and I've used the big one out of that. I've stamped it and I've heat embossed it. Okay. So that's going to go on there and cover up your inside covers. There. Don't matter which way up it goes. She says turning it round. So that's going to go on there. If you do find that you cut your corner a little short, you can use a sharpie and cover the edge in. Okay, so that's on there. This one's going to go on here. Like I said, I'm not going to string it up because you've seen that already on the first one. And I'm not putting a pocket on this one either. I'm leaving it plain. Okay, so that's going to go on that one. So this is the decoration for these. Okay, 
keeping it well away. Oh, good grief. Keeping it well away from the join where it's going to close up because you don't want that hindered in any way. All right. So, and I will string it and do it for tomorrow. The inserts are exactly the same size and dimension as the first loss, except this time I've just put one flower in the corner. Okay. And for the outsides, I've, I've stamped the exact same design. But if you can see here, I've put in using the um, alphabet of Julie's, Sweet Pea Alphabet, I think it's called. I've took out the words, the letters, notes, N-O-T-E-S, and I've backed it on a bit of foil card. Okay, and I'm going to pop that on the front. So this is just then a notebook instead of a Christmas planner. Just a gift idea. Keep it to the edge. And put the back one on. Obviously I can't put these inside yet because I haven't got the strings in. But once this is dry, I'll do so. There we are. And the outside. So that's two different designs. Two different ways of making it. Okay. Um, there we are. I don't want to mess with it too much because it's still all wet. But as you can see, it makes the exact same book, just a slightly different way. Um, and then once it's strung, those can go inside. I mean, you could make these for guys as well, eh? Nice little design for a man inside it. There we are. So, I hope that was okay. I didn't keep you too long. Um, I'll get this all sorted out now. And... If there's any questions, give me a shout. Just private message me or put it up on, you know, one of the pages, either Crafty Friends of or Julie Hickey's one. I'll pick it up. I'll find it. Um, no problem at all. So the next live I'm going to do, I'll probably do it next Monday, although I don't normally do them every week. I do them every other week, but I've got something on the Monday after. So um, I'll do it next Monday. And a few people have asked me, about this card how to do the wooden backing and how to do you know the little boxes with the tags that went with it um the little box of tags yeah so I'll, I'll do the tag box and i'll do this one next monday at seven o'clock so if anybody fancies watching then um yeah give us a shout out you know just pop on join us it's nice to see you all there and if you do make one of these notebooks okay um then please tag me because I'd love to see it and um, yeah I'll leave that there because they're like yeah so they're the three so so people can find the video when they're looking for it it'll have that last picture on there all right guys thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you soon okay thank you bye bye